Hello, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new background. I bought myself a little wire mesh board and I added some prints on and I think it's so pretty. It makes me so happy. I do want to get a little plant for behind me and then I think my craft room is pretty much complete. Anyway, that is not the point of the video. The point of the video is today we're gonna get organized. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through five ways that you can stay organized on Procreate on your iPad. As a graphic designer, I have to stay really organized in terms of my filing in my own job, mainly because I share my files with other designers and we work in a collaborative way. So for the however many years I've been working as a designer, I think it's seven now. That makes me feel old. I have learned how to just stay super organized with any sort of filing that is to do with the design. And I have taken that methodology and put it into how I use Procreate and how I organize all my files and keep on top of everything. So I'm gonna take you through a lot of quite basic things in Procreate to do with layers, stacks, and also groups as well. And all of these things will help you stay super organized. If you're like me and you love playing Procreate, you've probably got loads of files and you might feel a little bit overwhelmed by how many files there are. So this video is gonna help you stay organized and it's just gonna make your life a little bit easier. So let's dive into the video now. So straight away in my Procreate, you can already see that it's looking pretty organized. Before I dive in and talk about how I've made this look so pretty and neat, I am going to start with the first way that you can be organized. So if I just create a new file here, so I'm just tapping the plus at the top and we're just gonna do A4. Now, as soon as you create a new file, it opens it up automatically. This means when I go back into the gallery, it's created the file here, but we can see that it's just called Untitled Artwork. Now, this name's quite small. You might not even notice it when you first start using Procreate. However, imagine if you had like 100 files and they were all called Untitled Artwork. So just like on a computer, you might call a Word document a certain name, we are gonna name our files in Procreate. Naming your files just makes it so much easier to navigate and use. So for example, if you're gonna share this file to your computer, it's not just called Untitled Artwork, it's already got a name, so you know exactly what it's called. So there's a couple of ways we can name our files. The first way is if we just tap here. So I've just tapped on there, and we are going to just call this Organize. And now we can see that the name has changed. You can also change it when the file is open. So this is a really good habit to get to. As soon as you create a new file, if you just click the spanner button in the top left here, and then click on canvas information, then up here it says organize, which is the title. You can actually tap on this and you can change the name of it. So, so let's call it procreate. organized and done so that is the first way that we can stay organized in procreate so i'll just show you quickly how i've named some of my files in here so if i just tap on prints so here i've got lots of different prints and this one for example it just says black calligraphy and that's just a reminder for me to know that there's a couple of different layers in here so if I tap on here, you can see there's lots of different layers and I've only got one turned on at the moment. So naming your files is the first way you can stay organized in Procreate. So the next way to stay organized in Procreate is layers. So if we tap this icon up here in the top right, this opens our layers panel. So we can see we've got our background color, so we can tap that and we can change that to a completely different color. So when you open up a new file, it will automatically give you layer one. So if I start off by writing hello, so I've got my writing there, and now I want to add some dots into this artwork. So I'm just going to add in 
these dots. So I've added in my dots and I like how the dots sit. However, I want to move the hello down a little bit. Now to move a layer, you can tap this icon here. However, what's happened is because this is all on one layer, it's picking up the whole thing which we can see here. So I've just created one layer and it's all here. Now you can go in with your selection tool and I could go around and select this hello and then move it over here. If I wanted to keep moving this word around and not the dots, then that's quite a lengthy way of doing it. So one way we can do it is by creating new layers. So I've got my hello again and now I'm going to add a dots layer. So what I suggest is whenever you create a new element to your artwork, I'd always create a new layer. And the best way to stay organized with this is to rename these layers. So this first one, I can just tap and tap rename, and I'm just going to call it hello. And then this second one, I want to add some dots on, and I'm going to rename, and I'm going to call it dots. So this blue indicates that it's highlighted. And now if I add some dots all around here, then I've got all of my dots there. And if I want to move my word at all, I can just tap on the layers and I can move it. So by creating different elements on different layers, you can stay really organized within your artwork and you can amend it really easily. Always make sure you name your layers as well so you remember what they are. For example, this dots layer, it's actually quite hard to see on screen what is physically on this layer. So this works really well if you've got loads and loads of layers. If I'm just doing a piece of artwork and it just has one layer, I don't always name it. But when you start having more than one layer, it's a really good way of staying organized and clearly understanding which layer belongs to which graphical element. So the third way to stay organized within your artwork is something called groups. So what I'm gonna do is add in the word Millie. Now, as this is another design element, I'm going to add in another layer and we're gonna call it Millie, not Milky, Millie. And I'm just going to write Millie. Okay, so now I've written Millie and I want to just move this Millie over to the left a little bit. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. However, I want to be able to move both of these bits of text up. And what you could do is if I have Millie selected, I can also swipe to the right and I can move this up. However, again, if I'm always having to do that every time I want to move these around, that can be a little bit lengthy. So a great way to stay organized and group elements together is something called groups. So I've got my Millie and my Hello selected, and now I'm just gonna tap up here and add a group. So you can see these two have now been added into a folder, which is called a group, and you can rename this group as well. And again, that's a great way of staying organized. So if I tap rename, and I'm going to call this text. So now I've got a group which I can collapse. So if you have lots of different text layers, you could put them all into one folder and then you could collapse it. So it doesn't take up as much room on your layers panel. The great thing about grouping like this is these layers are still individual. So if I wanted to move my hello over slightly, I can totally do that. But if I wanted to move both layers all the way up, then I can select the group layer and tap my icon up here and I can move it. And you can see it's selected both layers. However, they're still separate. So groups is another way that you can stay really organized within your artwork. Just remember to name it so it's really clear what the group is. If you don't want an item in a group anymore, then you can just hold and move out so it moves out of the group. So it's not a permanent thing if you do group layers together. Okay, so I've just duplicated that artwork and I've just called it Procreate Organize 2. So I know it's the second one and I've just changed the background. Now, you could just keep adding files to your Procreate like this. However, if you end up having like hundreds of files, 
then you're gonna have a long list to scroll down and it could be quite hard to navigate. So one way to really organize your work together is something called stacks. And these are just like folders on your computer. So the easiest way to put these into stacks is to press the select button and then I'm just tapping here and here. And then up here, the word stack appears. So if I just tap that, we can see that it's created a stack of these two pieces of artwork. Now, when you create a new stack, it will always call it stack. So just like when you name your files, it's also a great idea to rename your stacks. So I'm just going to tap on this and call it Procreate Tutorial. So now we have renamed our stack and that's starting to feel a little bit more organized already. So the final way you can stay organized in Procreate is creating these stack covers. I just think it's a really clear, simple way to see which folder contains what work. So I'm just gonna show you how I create these cover images myself. So I'm just gonna tap on my card stack and I know I want this artwork, I want it the same color and I will just adapt the calligraphy inside to say procreate. So what I'm gonna do is select and duplicate. And then this is a great way to show you how you can move files out of stack. So if you filed something away incorrectly, so all you need to do is you hold down on the file you want to move and hover it over cards. Now, if I just drop it here, then you can see it's just gone into the main folder. However, I want it to go into this Procreate tutorial. So I just hover it over and it opens up that stack and I can drop it in. So now you can see that that cover has become the front image of the stacks. So if you don't have all of these covers, then it is totally fine. I just find it a lot easier to navigate because these words are quite small and this just makes it feel a little less messy. So all I'm gonna do is change what this word says. So if you're doing cover photos like this and you're not too confident with calligraphy, that's totally fine. What you could do is you could add text instead. So I'm just clicking this banner button and then add and then add text. And you could totally just write procreate instead. Now, as you can see, I've got a lovely new stack cover and it works really well with all of my other stack covers. I've personally picked these colors just because they're the blink lettering colors and I want to do a bit of calligraphy for them. But you could totally style these in any way you want. You could make them a lot more different to each other so it's really obvious that they have different bits of work in them. Or you can make them all exactly the same color and just really simple text. So that's the final way to stay organized in Procreate. And I think having these stack cover images just makes it so much easier to navigate and use. This just looks so satisfying. So those are my five tips for keeping organized in Procreate. I hope you learned a few little things from there. I think the thing that a lot of people especially don't use very often is layers. So if you have been creating artwork with lots of different complicated designs, then make sure you're using those layers. If there's any other things you'd like to learn in Procreate, then let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well for lots more videos from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.